I thought, how can I figure out which books in my library I'd like without using any critical thought? And ChatGPT is here. I don't know about this one. Loki, I might not even read it. Hi everyone, it's Alexa. Welcome back to my channel. I got a haircut. Again, you're not subscribed to me if my hair doesn't change every video. I own 160 books. I counted them. I found them out last time I did a whole like book rearranging video and I've only really read like 40 of them, maximum 40 of them. I thought, how can I figure out which books in my library I'd like without using any critical thought? And ChatGPT is here. I think I mentioned before that I'd never do a TBR because I don't want to be held accountable. So this is me being brave. All right, this is me being brave. So today we're gonna have ChatGPT build my TBR. We'll talk about my thoughts on the recommendations. Yeah, we'll see. But if you're wondering how I did this, firstly, I made sure that all of the books I've ever read were rated and or reviewed. And I put those ratings onto an app. I had to export my shelf off of Storygraph. And then with all the data, I had to remove all of the cells that were filled with books that I haven't rated or I haven't read. From there, I also deleted any unnecessary info like the date I read them, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. I kept these four main columns, which were the author, the title, how many times I've read them, and what my rating was. Everything else I removed. I didn't give it any text to read. I don't know. I didn't want to overwhelm it. Typed in the JetGBT. I said, these are books that I've read or rated. I copy pasted that whole thing and then I let it do its thing and parse through. Next, I had to make sure it knew the books that I owned. So from there, I used Goodreads. Don't know why I didn't use Storygraph. I think I'm just more used to using Goodreads. Went on Goodreads and then I typed in all of the books that I owned, but I kept selecting them to be put into a like shelf that I titled the books I owned. And and then from there, I had to export that list off of Goodreads. It exports your whole library. I then had to filter just the books that I owned. Then said the ChatGPT, these are books that I own that I have not read yet. Kept the author, I kept the title, and that was really it. I put that in there. Then I let ChatGPT do its thing. And then I said, based off of the books that I've rated, please recommend me 20 books that you think I would like. And then I made it explain why it did that. Let's do some ChatGPT read receipts and we'll go through everything that I recommended me. If you're wondering like the specific prompts I use, what I said was, can you recommend 20 books from my library that are most suited to my likes? Please base my likes from my highest ranked read books. So then it gave me 20 books. I don't know why I did 20. I just wanted a, I love abundance. I don't know what to tell you. I just asked it to give me 20 books because I was just curious what it would say. And they accidentally gave me two books that I wasn't in the mood to read, so I made it remove those from the list. Normal People and Little Fires Everywhere. I think I have a, a book review of them somewhere. It's like one of my first ever book reviews, so it's gone. So now the updated list is this. And then I said, can you explain why each book was recommended to me? And Loki, it was a little vague. So I do my classic where I go, can you expand with more specifics? And here are the 10 books that ChatGPT has recommended to me. So the first one is The Song of Achilles by Madeline Miller. This was a book that was gifted to me from one of my friends who's also a reader. My friend keeps asking if I've read it and I haven't because I'm scared of Greek mythology. So I think it's really funny that Song of Achilles is ranked number one. There's not been a single book on my red list that follows Greek mythology. So I was surprised that it recommended it to me, but it says this novel aligns with your appreciation for rich storytelling and complex characters. Miller's reimagining of Greek mythology offers a poignant exploration of love, friendship, and destiny resonating with your enjoyment of emotionally compelling narratives. So I think this is scaring me less. Achilles and Patroclus are friends that have to fight a war together. Maybe? Don't correct me if I'm wrong. And I'll do a reading vlog for this one. I knew for a while that I would dedicate a whole vlog to it. I will do that, but not right now. I'm not reading any of these books right now. I just got really excited. I just want to build a TBR. I don't want to read these right now. I have two more finals left, so. Ah! So the next book is The Handmaid's Tale by Margaret Atwood. I actually picked this up from a free little library. I have a bad habit of picking up classics just because I feel like I should read them. This is, this is it. Oh, wait a second. Uh, wait a second. This is actually not even The Handmaid's Tale. I don't know why I thought it was The Handmaid's Tale. Um, I fooled myself. I've made a fool of myself. We're gonna skip that one. So we're gonna have nine books that ChatGPT recommended because I'm too lazy to get up and get the book 11. Anyways, next. <laughs> next, we're moving on. The second book that was recommended to me was Pride and Prejudice by Jane Austen. I started this book, but I have not finished it. I've been meaning to finish it Oh my god, a burp is escaping me. <sighs> Anyways, I've actually been enjoying it, but I have just so many other books that I've been reading because I've been borrowing a lot of library books. I have like deadlines. Those are more pressing to me. I'm obsessed with the movie. I have a bad habit of watching the movie before reading the books. I don't know. I feel like it makes the book a lot more fun for me. I'm at page 100 to 400. So I'm excited to finish this. I've been meaning to. So ChatGPT kind of, oh, 
ChatGPT kind of popped off on this one. ChatGPT says, Austin's classic novel is recommended due to your evident appreciation for well-crafted characters, intricate social dynamics, and themes of love and societal expectations. Like other novels you've enjoyed, Pride and Prejudice offers wit and romance and timeless commentary on human nature. Kind of popped off on that one. But maybe it's one of those things where like horoscopes are so big and when they pop off, you're like, yeah, oh my God, that's so me right now. I can't tell if this is a detailed description or just really vague and inapplicable. But you know what? I love horoscopes. So I'm gonna thank ChatGPT for this one. The next book it wants me to read is The Book Thief by Marcus Zusek. I started this book when I was in high school. I didn't own it. I read it and then I never finished it. It is 1939, Nazi Germany. The country is holding its breath. Death has never been busier and will become busier still. This is about a young girl whose family is hiding a Jewish man in their basement from Nazis. His family is not Jewish. I love any book that personifies death. It's something that will always get me hooked. Like, oh, it'll get me every time. It was recommended to me because of my enjoyment of emotionally resonant stories with profound themes. The Sussex novel, narrated by death during World War II, explores the power of words, resilience, and humanity in the face of tragedy, similar to the depth found in Flowers for Algernon. I actually read Flowers for Algernon for a project in grade 12. Something about the writing really stuck with me. I think I rated it five stars, and I think it was one of the first times that I've ever liked a book I had to read for English class so I think that also like heightened the ranking that I provided it but yeah I think it's really interesting that this was recommended to me based off of that one I didn't think there'd be any similarities to that the next book <laughs> so the next book recommended to me is an astronaut's guide to life on earth by Chris Hadfield I think this is a non-fiction so stinky I don't like reading nonfiction and if you're wondering why I own this book like why would you get a nonfiction book if you don't even like it one time our school hosted a conference and Chris Hadfield was a keynote speaker so I have a signed Chris Hadfield novel and if you don't know who Chris Hadfield is it's probably because you're not Canadian. Chris Hadfield is a really famous Canadian astronaut. He did covers of songs from space. A wonderful spirit. We eat it up. I'm not into space and I don't like nonfiction, so I find it really interesting that this was given to me. I don't even know what this was about. Is this just a bio, a memoir? Chris Hadfield reveals how his impossible dream of becoming an astronaut came true. That sounds very sweet, but if you're wondering why it was given to me, I am wondering too. It says, given your diverse reading interests, Hadfield's memoir offers a fascinating departure into the world of space exploration. His insights into leadership, perseverance, and the wonders of the universe provide a unique perspective that complements your curiosity about various topics. I don't know about this one. Low-key, I might not even read it. Sorry! The next book on my list is Eleanor and Park. Read this in high school, finished it. I was obsessed with it. If you were a teen in the 2010s, you would have been familiar with Rainbow Rabble and John Green. This was like a quintessential teen read if you were a teen in the 2010s. And basically this follows a love story between these two teens who don't really want anything to do with each other at first, but then they fall for each other. A lot of the language surrounding describing Park as an Asian man was deemed to be fetishization of something sort. Sorry, I had to slow down that word. Fetishization? Oh god. I've felt really weird about opening it up since, but now is my time to go through this and see how I feel about it. So, this recommendation is based on your enjoyment of authentic and emotionally resonant characters. Ravel's novel beautifully captures the complexities of young love, friendship, and identity, offering a heartfelt story that you may find relatable and engaging. Yeah, I think that sums up what I liked about it when I was a teen. The next one that was recommended to me is Ready Player One. Again, this is a classic that I found in a free little library and I was like, you know what? I should own classics. And so I picked it up and now it's mine. I've heard it's really good. I watched the movie. Again, I love watching movies and never reading the books. And I know a lot of people love Ready Player One. I don't know why. Like, not that I'm saying that people shouldn't love Ready Player One. This isn't me being like, I don't know why people like this book. It's me going genuinely, I have no idea why people like this book. It's a dystopian novel. So there's a game that people are playing with and then there's a giant prize for someone who solves a mystery that the creator of the game places in the game. ChatGPT says, considering your enjoyment of immersive storytelling and fast-paced adventures, Klein's novel immerses readers in a virtual reality universe filled with nostalgic references, high stakes, challenges, and a compelling quest narrative that promises an exciting and entertaining read. If it were to recommend me a classic, at least it's one that's hopefully fast-paced. I got a really, really teeny brain. The next book that was recommended to me is The Curious incident of the dog in the nighttime. I picked this up from another free little library again. I love my free little libraries. I actually picked this up because I saw that Olivia Rodrigo read it and she said she liked it and obviously because I'm insane I picked it up and wanted to read it too. So recommended for its unique narrative voice and exploration of human nature, Haddon's novel offers an intimate portrayal of a protagonist with autism as he investigates the mysterious death of a neighbor's dog. This book's blend of mystery, humor, and emotional depth that may resonate with your diverse reading tastes. The next one that it gave me was Beautiful Creatures. This was something that I read when I was in elementary 
elementary school. I think this is the first book I ever like read on my own volition and finished on my own, but low key, I don't remember a single thing about it and I don't know if I really liked it. I've been meaning to reread it to see how I feel about it and see if I should give it away or not. Now I'm going to go through this. This was also turned into a movie, which I've watched actually many times. This recommendation is based on your interest in fantasy and supernatural themes. Garcia's novel, set in a small southern town where supernatural secrets abound, offers a blend of romance, mystery, and magic that promises an immersive and engaging reading experience. I don't know where the love of fantasy and supernatural came from. Maybe it's because I read a couple of books where death is personified and maybe that gets characterized in there. The Life of Addie LaRue, A Monster Calls. But I genuinely don't know what other books I would have read that would make Chad to be think that I like fantasy and supernatural. I read them in that library, but I rated it really low. So I don't know. And the last one was Nine Stories by J.D. Salinger. I don't know what this is. I think it's a short story collection. I'm just really good at guessing. There's no explanation on this book. You know why I picked this up. Classic. But I've never finished a short story collection. So maybe I'll like this one. And this one's recommended to me for its introspective exploration of human experiences and emotions. Each story offers a glimpse into the complexities of life and relationships, similar to the nuanced storytelling you've enjoyed in other works. I tried to make Chachibichi, like, explain to me which books it based its recommendations off of. I think I got confused with the way I worded it because I didn't do it too well, so... So I was completely guessing as to why it recommended me things. I will genuinely read these books, and I'll get back to you all in about a month, maybe, with my thoughts on these books. I'll make another video, I'll do a reading wrap-up. Maybe I'll vlog it too. Thanks for sticking around. If you have exams, good luck! Manifest my graduation, thank you. And I'll have a vlog next week for my friends who are wondering where my iron ring vlog is. Next week. Thanks for sticking around. Subscribe if you want. I make videos about a bunch of things, not only books. Bye!